Hey everybody, Rosemato here, and welcome to part 74 of my Umineko Let's Play. So, with the last episode, we started episode 7, and like every episode, it seems to start completely differently. This one, introducing new two new characters right off the bat. So there was Will, who is like part of the Inquisitor group, the Witch Hunters, that like Delanor and them are part of. Uh, so he's like a detective. And he is the kind of outsider brought in to investigate this game. Uh, the question being, who killed Beatrice? So unlike the other games where it focused on, like, who is killing the family members, who's the murderer here, this one is, who killed Beatrice? So we have Beato's funeral, and we are also introduced to another character, uh, Leon, who is the uh, child, the never-before-seen child across Inatsui. And I did mention it in my comments in the last episode, but yes, I did say Leona was a girl, but it has not been confirmed. It could go either way. So I'm going to refer to Leona as they, as best as I can from this point on until we get confirmation on if Leona is a girl or a boy. Uh, could go either way, I feel like. Um, so Leona is like the heir to the Ushuramiyas. And they have been brought on as Will's kind of like assistant in solving Burnkestel's uh, game board of who killed Beatrice. So we left off with uh, Will about to meet up with Kinzo. So Kinzo is alive in this one. So we're actually going to get to kind of hear it from the horse's mouth and see if we can get some backstory on his and Beatrice's relationship. So I think I've been talking long enough. Let's go ahead. Let's get back into this. Kinzo and Genji could be seen in the VIP room. Kinzo was sitting back in a chair, his eyes closed as though in a troubled sleep. Kinzo slowly opened his eyes. Those eyes were red from crying. They regained their focus and slowly fell on Will. ウィル。ウィラードだ。奥闇申し上げる。ビル。ウィラードだ。奥闇申し上げる。ビル。ウィラードだ。奥闇申し上げる。ビル。ウィラードだ。奥闇申し上げる。ビル。ウィラードだ
親方様は遺言を好まれます生きているうちより何事かを投げ出すお方ではございませんだろうな、ね、らしからぬこととは思っていた聖ある限りあがいてこそ人間であろうがそれを早々に諦め遺言に残そうという浅ましさなど少子千万確かにその方がお前らしい死ぬかもしれないから過去語りを記せと言い出すのは確かにお前の柄じゃねえ当主様がベアトリーチ様のことを深く深く愛しておられたことは存じ上げております私たちにとって当主様は最大の尊敬の対象であるとともに生きる全ての模範ですどうか迷える私たちのためにいかにしておじい様が彼女を愛し抜いたか愛ゆえに生き抜いたかその愛の強さを私たちにお導きくださるようお願いすることはできないでしょうかなかなか達者だあなたが言葉を選ばないからです<笑>わかずお前はベアトリーチェの何を知っているというのか真に無知なる者は関心さえ持たぬベアトリーチェの名を知っている時点で無知なる者ではなく縁なき者でもない道理だな俺が知っているベアトリーチェはお前がかつて六軒島に屋敷を設ける以前に出会った最愛の女だ。So this is where we get into this. So who is that b e a t r i c e on Rokenjima? Because that wasn't the original one. しかし、おそらくは死別して、娘さん。Let's get into this. Hopefully he was just a daughter to Kinzo, or she was just a daughter to Kinzo, but I, I have a hard time believing that. I feel like she is probably. The way that he kept her locked away and the way she spoke to Badler, I feel like he treated her as some sort of like and dressed her up like Beatrice. I'm sure like the, the mother probably dressed like that. So I bet that was just basically like his, um, like she was like his replacement, you know? Or she was, she was the original Beatrice's replacement. So t h e n q u a d r i a n de Sodaterati, the m u s l i I want to know and I'm also afraid to know at the same time. Mirad, son, to Rokenjimaniwa. Quadrian, not a tatemono, a sonzai itashimase. So no Quadrian to you, Namae. Saki Rosa Obasan to Hanasta Tokimo. So even Leon doesn't know about it. So they might tie none on this one. Sasha treated her as that. 愛人の娘を囲う六軒島の森の奥深くにある隠し屋敷の名だ面白いクワドリアンの名を知ろうとはな続けよお前に興味が出たぞケンソーシュラウトングリンドクワドリアンにいたのはベアトリーチの娘だろうだが少なくともお前は、oh, no. そうは思った He's getting to the same thing that I'm saying, where it's just like he, she was like a replacement, a romantic replacement. Oh, not as father. 彼女はお前を父と思っていると言ったにもかかわらず、父とは呼んでいなかった。呼ばなかったのか、呼ぶことは許されなかったのか。それが意味することは、一つしかない。Oh, that's interesting, because Chick Beto was the opposite, kept calling Badler father, even though he didn't want her to. それは何だというのか。生まれ変わりだ。Reincarnation. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, and what would he do with someone he believed to be the reincarnation of the woman that he loved? Hmm. Genji, of course, this game's Genji probably wouldn't remember that. However, near the end of the first game, when the survivors all gathered in Kinzo's study- Oh my god, how am I supposed to remember stuff in the first game? Are you kidding me? Genji was asked whether Kinzo and Beatrice ever had a child together. And he denied it, saying, I have not heard of anything like that. Okay. It's like one of those, uh, it's all about the wordplay. Where it's like... He didn't say yes or no. No, he's a dirty, gross old man who probably did horrible things to his daughter. ベアトリーチはお前にとって最愛の女だった。死んでも Shall I throw this insolent man out? Genji asked Kinzo. For a while, Kinzo hung his head in silence, as though remembering something from his own past. He's probably going to tell us everything. I hope he does. なぜ in Corridorian, she asked both Kinzo and Rosa about who she was. Who am I? So that that takes on multiple meanings, not just like that's the big question in this game, right? Like who am I? She wasn't just asking that to Badler, but asking herself that. わらわのことをベアトリーチと呼ぶ。それは確かに。そなたの言うように偉大な魔女の名前らしい。しかし、それはわらわではないのだ。わらわは魔法など何も使えぬ。わらわはその魔女の魂を好みに封じられているだけな
aspect to it, but no, not really, just metaphors. So, the memory and the memory are also used. This does feel like I might get some answers in this chapter, which is exciting. Mirad, Sama, Oyakata Sama, wa, Idainaru Maho no Gishki ni yori, Naki Beatrice Sama no Umare Kawari no Akago o eta no de gozai. それを否定することはできませんこの鳥を否定はしねえそして金蔵がどれだけベアトリーチェという女を深く愛していたかも忘れがたみにどういう愛情を注ぐかは人の勝手だ育つほどに似ていくその姿に金蔵が愛ゆえに特別な感情を持ったとしても俺はそれを人間らしい感情だと思うぜお前に我が愛が理解できるというのか理解する資格はねえだが否定する資格もねえおおベアトリーチ私を許してくれ Hinzo sobbed quietly for a while wiping away his tears Because of love, he believed she was Beatrice reborn and raised her that way. However, somewhere in his heart, he might have felt pangs of conscience, telling him he might be forcing his emotions on someone who wasn't really Beatrice. Then the Beatrice of Corridorian had an unexpected guest, Rosa. Unable to believe that she was the Beatrice that Kenzo desired, and suffering from her inability to understand who she was, she expressed a desire to escape to the outside world. Then she fell from the cliff and died. Genji wa, omote ni dasenu sono shi o nai nai de shori shita. Sou shiki ttu no wa, shisha no tame ni yaru nja ne. Iki teru ningen ga, shinda ningen e no miden o tachikiru tame ni okona u mon da. Sore ga, deki na katta. Da kara, tadare tan da. ベアトリーチェ。お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、お、
何も語ることなどないとも思うがいいえ語るべきでございます私は女としてクアドリアンのベアトリーチェ様のお心を誰かに伝えねばと思ってまいりましたそしてその資格を持つ人間が現れました今こそ全てを包み隠さずお話しすべき時かと存じます I mean, we're ripping the guts out of this game, right? This is what it is, bearing, bearing it all 熊沢さんは知っているのですかベアドリーチェのこと知ってるだろう第四のゲームの時連絡船の船長は熊沢がクワドリアンに出入りしていたことを証言しているおそらく熊沢は屋敷とクワドリアンの双方で異なる勤務シフトを持っていたに違いない若い娘の世話だ育児経験の豊富な熊沢はさぞ重宝されただろうさようでございます乳母であったとおっしゃっていただいてもよろしいかと思いますそんな信じられない本当にウィルさんの話は本当なんですかはい事実でございますベアトリーチェ様のために島の反対側に建てられた秘密の屋敷クワドリアンの存在は真実でございます金蔵が制裁といつ結婚したかは知らねえが当時すでに莫大な財産を持ち六軒島を丸ごと買い取った金蔵は交わらぬ2つの屋敷を建ててそこに2つの生活を両立させたんだ Kinzo's children had also been aware of Kinzo's cladded stun and centricities at the time. It probably hadn't been easy to set up two lives. Moreover, Kinzo's wife had been suspicious and had sniffed around all the time. Oyakata sama wa ojikan no yurus kagiri, Kuadorian e kayo ware mashta. Toki ni wa go shicho to itswarare, nan nichi mo taizai sare. Beatrice sama to no seikatsu o taizetsu ni nasai mashta. それは親子としての関係だけでなく亡きベアトリーチェ様への深い愛を垣間見れる、mm, 心温まるものでございました。I guess it depends on how that love expresses itself. それは亡きベアトリーチェの代用品として扱ったこともあったと言っているようにも聞こえるな。おや、そう聞こえたなら申し訳ございません。ベアトリーチェ様は父からの愛は一心に受けられていたでしょうしかし時にご自身に理解できぬ愛を知られていたことは否定できません Even when you try and make it all flowery like that it still sounds icky Forced to bear a love she didn't understand Kumasawa's tone made it sound as though she was scolding Kinzo As a mother who had raised many kids, Kumasawa had probably spotted that Kinzo's love was often of a mistaken sort. However, the more the girl grew to look like her mother, the more distorted and twisted Kinzo's heart became. Because of his deep love, it grew very, very twisted. All right. Okay. Nazire, Waga Tomo yo. Waka te ol. Waga ai wa eien ni fumetsu. なれどそれが間違った相手に注がれたことがあったの私は認めねばならぬおじいさまそんなまさかリオン様世の中のすべての人間には必ず何かの縁がございます身に覚えがなくとも必ず何かの縁がございますその縁が人に絡みつき引き寄せるのでございますそんなおじいさま Just as Kenzo had done, Leon had also wiped away tears and stared down at the floor Apparently the truth had been too much of a shock for the young, young successor to handle Probably isn't、uh, feeling quite so おやかたさま Uh, you know Ad, ad, admiring, I guess I could say, like, you know, not thinking that Kinzo is such an admirable man. He's, he's a flawed human as well. 
in many ways. More. <laughs> I mean, do we have to? I mean, we're dancing around it. I know what they're implying. I don't know. I don't want to get to the nitty gritty details of it, but okay. そうか。その時が来たか。我が友よ。あんたが語らなきゃ何も真実は明らかにならない。親方様、もはや知る権利と資格があるかと思います。after taking a deep breath, Kinzo finally lowered the hands that had been covering his face and looked at Will and Leon with those red eyes. <laughs> リオンも聞き客人にウィラードと言ったかああこの私が自らの口より真実を話せるうちにこの機会を設けてくれたことを感謝するお前はきっとベアトリーチェより使わされた天の使いに違いない天の使いに違いない。感謝する。その機会を設けたのはベアトリーチェじゃねえ。どこぞの魔女だ。いや。どっちも魔女には違いねえ。お前が誰でもよい。私に機会を与えた。それで十分だ。感謝するぞ。
<笑>とんでもない欲深な長老たちは互いの利益ばかりを主張し合い新しい投資を選び出すことさえできなかったのだまるで沈みゆく船で新しき船長は誰かと議論するような愚かさよだからこそ本家の誰ともしがらみのないお前が突然に抜擢を受けたすべてはこの足の指のせいだ足の指が一本ずつ足りなかったなら我が人生は全く異なるものになっていたであろう The Ushiromiya family, Polydactyl, was seen as a sign of good fortune. This was because it was a common factor among many of the greats in the family's history. Kudarano Hanasio. Choro Domo, Jibun Tachino Daremo Toko Shina Yumano Hone de Araba. Dare Demo Yokatanda. Tamatama Bunkesuni, Yo Ashino Yubiga Lopong Arimonga Ilto Mimini Hidi. Sore de Ito Kimata Wakaka. So you got to that. 長老どもは自分たちの操り人形になるならどこの青二歳でもよかったのだむしろ帝王学に無知な人間ほど好ましいおじい様リオンお前は違うお前は我が全てを受け継ぐものだお前が生を受けた日よりそれは運命づけられていただからこそお前に銀の指輪を与え厳しく育ててきたそなたは私とは違う誰にも恥じることのない立派な投資を後継ぎであるぞ、oh、Kenzo actually giving somebody a compliment あはい操り人形の投資か気楽なものじゃねえだろう <laughs> As he pondered about where to begin, Kenzo laughed bitterly. It would probably bring back nothing but painful memories no matter where he started from. I became the rope and the tug of war between the elders who thought of nothing but their own profit, and I probably could have snapped at any moment. However, people, far more people are far more resilient than one would think. Though I spent so many days like a dead man, I was not killed, so I would have to search for death on my own. The next thing I knew, I'd reached the age where I could no longer refer to myself as young without drawing laughter from those who were. They were long, dreary, gray days without any substance, and they lasted for a full 20 years. In 20 years, a person can be born, find a purpose, and even become their own man with their own place in the world. In short, one truly becomes a human only when they have become a working adult, and I spent an amount of time long enough to create a human, doing nothing except playing the part of puppet to those greedy old men. Ironically, though that time aged my body, it did not age my mind. In my heart, I was still young, and I looked back fondly on those fulfilling days before I was summoned to Odawara. Only my body continued to age, and at some point, the gulf between the two had widened to the point where it was hard to comprehend. So I could hardly believe that the worn out man in the mirror was really me. No, it really wasn't me. I was the head of the Ushiromiya family, in name only. I had no rights, no autonomy. There was no need for me to do anything other than what was asked of me. I was just a doll sitting there on the, sh on the shelf gathering dust. I remember nothing but lazily flipping through Western books I liked, locking myself in my own world, doing nothing but playing with roses and drinking terrible drinks. And it lasted a full 20 years. Before I knew it, I had a stranger for a wife. It wasn't any wife I had chosen. She was someone the elders had chosen and forced on me for their own reasons. The daughter of some noble family or something. But that hardly mattered to me. I did not love my wife, but neither did I dislike her. I just didn't care. I fathered a few children, but that wasn't out of love for my wife. They were just born before I knew it. That's all there was to it. None of it mattered. No, that's not quite right. 
Everything was decided by someone other than me, and I simply obeyed. That was the job of the Ushurmia family head. That's why he has no love, no real love for his children, it seems like, except for... Except for the daughter he had with the woman he actually loved. ゴータンなる名君と戦えられたおじいさまがそのような日々を送っていたなんて。リオンよ、自ら生きる人生ほど気迫で長いものはない。なのにそれはあっという間に過ぎ去るのだ。心せよ。自ら生きる人生。生き
It was said that these ultimate weapons were packed with 1.55 tons of explosive. And then there's the Rokunjima explosion. It was probably leftover stuff from the... Because I was thinking that, I'm like, whoever... Whoever is behind all of this, how did they, like, get a bomb? It was probably already here in the island the whole time. Capable of sinking any kind of warship with a single blast. To strengthen the homeland defense, the Navy drafted a plan to build a string of hidden bases from Hachijojima to Yosu uh, Yoko... Sorry, let's try that again. Yokosuka. All to house submarines loaded with special attack weapons. It's all coming together. ハチジョージマに基地が作られたことは知っていました。しかしそれが六軒島にもあったなんて。どこの間抜けがこんな何もない島に作ろうと言い出したやら。一徳上の都合。バカバカしい。他身の考えることなどわからぬし。私にとって
They did drills by shouting in loud voices and swinging their bamboo spears around. Drinking the wine called anger was simply what they needed to do to numb their fear. The more one drinks wine, the more one needs to drink to get drunk. Their useless anger continued to pile up day after day without pause. As for me, I did not fear death, so I had no need of the wine called anger. This made their cowardice all the more apparent to me. <laughs> However, it went both ways. Just as I was able to spot their cowardice, they were able to pick up on my lethargy. There's, yep, that, that's it. <laughs> that's the bunker. First Lieutenant Yamamoto was the commanding officer in charge of the Rokunjima garrison. He was just another filthy coward trying to forget his fear with violence, and would reprimand his subordinates for slacking off at the drop of a hat. The stories of his life he'd spout off when in a good mood were all about how much of a thug he had been, ignoring the rules of society. On and on about how so-and-so was a prick so he taught them a lesson, or how everyone was so scared of him that he got special treatment. He kept on talking about what a vile human he was as though it was a badge of honor. Normally, I had nothing to do with this disagreeable lieutenant. He would always hang around with his non-commissioned subordinates. So as long as I treated him with a snappy salute, I could more or less ignore him for the time being. Now that the construction project on the island had been suspended indefinitely, there was, no, there was no longer any use for an engineer like me. So why did the lieutenant ask for me specifically? At that moment, I couldn't think of anything. Beatrice, maybe she showed up here because we know she's got a lot of money, right? So she must be here for some reason, because why would she just show up on some desolate island? Yep. Need an interpreter. Lieutenant liked to brag about his education in front of the non-commissioned officers, but he held a bit of a grudge against me for being even more highly educated than him. He also felt uncomfortable about having me as a subordinate, because he was younger than me, so I was definitely not the kind of person he could hit it off with. Just the fact I knew several languages must have hurt his pride. <laughs> Why on earth would he need an interpreter in a cave on an un uninhabited island that even our superiors had forgotten? His question made it clear someone who would need an interpreter would be visiting Rokunjima. That evening, I found out exactly what he was talking about. That pointless cavern submarine dock that had never been used was now being approached slowly by a submarine of the Italian Navy. Of course, I knew the Italians had been our allies. However, this was the first time I had seen anything from their military with my own eyes. <laughs> イタリアは降伏しているはずです。これはどういうことでしょう。降伏したのはイタリア王国だ。だが、それを受け入れない者たちは、親独政権RSIを樹立させ、戦争を続けたのだ。RSIイタリア社会共和国。別名、サロ共
そうでなくともはるばる日本までやってきたこと自体が驚きです彼らはなぜ日本に六軒島に The submarine was both weather worn and massive. This dog had never even been used by one of our own country's submarines. I doubt anyone here imagined it would end up welcoming in one from a far off nation. All the guards of Rokunjima, of which there were only about 30, stood at attention as the submarine docked. Italia Gun, I'm going to meet you. 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 注意殿の話によると何か重要なものを運んでるって話だ暗号変換機か新型エンジンなんかの設計図じゃないのかオラツミニュンヌンより上層部がまだここを覚えててくれたことの方が驚きだぜ後ろ見や早く来い貴様は通訳だろうがはい注意殿 On top of the hatch was a young Italian saluting us. Normally, this should have been the job of a commissioned officer, but his clothes looked like those of a sailor. And it really didn't look like he had the dignity and composure of a ship's captain. That probably meant all the commissioned officers in charge had died in the accident that had befallen this sub. Crew members crawled out of the hatch one by one, but they all looked pale and entirely worn out. I wasn't sure how long ago the accident had happened, but being crammed together in this tiny sub filled with blurry gas for any amount of time can't be good for your health. Adding to the problem with the broken ventilation system was the fact that they couldn't afford to travel about carelessly on the surface of the waters around Japan right now. They had essentially traveled here inside a can of poison gas. Almost all of them were unable to walk without leaning on someone else. It looked like a bunch of people staggering out of a hospital boat. <laughs> The crew members seemed to understand I was speaking English, but it looked as though none of them could speak it. Eventually, someone who seemed to be dressed as an officer saluted. I can not speak English. Please, wait. The officer answered in slow, laborious English. After asking us to wait, he shouted something to his subordinates in rapid Italian. It looked as though he was telling them to get someone among them who could speak English. And I'll be Beatrice, right? At that moment, I heard a high pitched cough. It wasn't a man's cough, it was a woman's. Let's see her. Hey! As she came down from the hatch, a woman with beautiful golden hair said this in English. In this filthy cavern, the appearance of one as beautiful as she was seemed like an angel descending upon us. It's strange to see her in, like, normal clothing. She looks no worse for wear. <laughs> Her hair looks perfect. I don't know how common is it to have like women in like World War II, uh, like among the submarines or like in ships or just out at war. It seems unusual, but I don't know my history too well. So. <laughs> Lieutenant wouldn't shut up. He must have been surprised to see a beautiful woman appear from the submarine, and more than a little annoyed to see all her attention focused on me alone. It was a mark of how divinely beautiful she was. ちょいどの彼女だけが英語をわかるようです。彼女が彼らの通訳になります。艦長は死亡。代表者は先ほどの士官のようです。あのうるさくあなたに叫んでいる男は何者？まさかあなたの上司なの？不幸なことに私が美
あの怒鳴ってるみっともない男とは大違いあなたがここの将校だったらよかったのにおや私も西洋人にお世辞をもらえるとは思いませんでした<笑>あなた面白い人だわ名前は後宮金蔵ですよろしければお嬢さんの名前もぜひベアトリーチェ・カスティリオーニようこそベアトリーチェ日本へあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はあなたの名前はその交換がなぜ日本にスウェズ運河からインド洋を越えてはるばる日本まで来たというのか確かに同盟国としてはドイツの方がはるかに近いはずなぜわざわざ日本までやってきたのでしょう途方もない規模の遠大な作戦か何かだったのかもしれんその全容はわからんその潜水艦がただならぬ任務を帯びていたらしいことは後に理解することとなる。They said there had been about 60 of them at the time of their departure. However, only about 10 of them, including b e a t r i c e had survived. Their submarine had apparently hit a mine or something in the nearby waters and sustained a great deal of damage. They told us it had flooded rapidly with water, which had taken out the batteries and released a large amount of chlorine gas. Her sub had been completely incapable of continuing further. Nothing but a massive lump of metal floating in the dock. Since the sub seemed to be carrying something of immense value, the higher ups ordered us to investigate. After questioning the Italians, with Bates, Ricci, and me acting as double interpreters, we concluded that this thing of immense value must have been her father himself. Apparently, b e a t r i c e s father was extremely high up in the RSI hierarchy, and it was thought he might have worked alongside the Italian Prime Minister himself. Though their massive voyage had apparently been part of some top secret mission, now that the man himself and all the commissioned officers had died, the reason for coming to Japan remained a mystery. And since the higher ups were telling us to investigate, that meant that even they didn't know what it was. Their ship had broken down, their mission was unknown, and the high official they'd been carrying was dead. And、even the Japanese government didn't know why they were here. The Italian's great and perilous voyage had come to a meaningless and utterly fruitless end. あらそうよアルデンテに仕上げるには茹で加減が難しいの。That's weird to see Kinzo like a normal person actually joking around and light and airy. It's cute. It's cute to see their relationship. It's, it's just really like knowing how it ends up is puts a dark cloud over it. なら日本人はみんなスパゲティネーロだわ。よくご存知で。日本人はシャンプーの代わりに。イカスミを使います<笑>金蔵はすごいわ何でも知っているのねイタリアに来たことがあるのありませんしかし本はいろいろと読みました東洋人がイタリアの本をへえ例えばダンナニッコロ・マキャベッリダンテ・アリギエリムだからあなたが永遠の宿女であることも存じていますよ金蔵はとんでもない勉強家だわあなたはひょっとして日本では高貴な家の出身なのでは<笑>さあどうでしょうあなたは他の野蛮そうな日本人とはまるで違うわ私にはわかるのあなたはきっと高貴な家の人間だわ後宮家は日本の貴族の家柄なのとんでもない
宝石で一山当てただけのただの成金の一族です私が勉強していたのは高貴なるものとしてのたしなみではなく何をすることも許されなかったら本を読むかバラをいじるか酒に溺れるかしかやることがなかったからですよ Beatrice hadn't asked that question out of malice. It had just been a curious question asked to a friend from a faraway country. However, Beatrice was from a noble family herself, so she could tell. She could see the faint, gloomy look on Kinzo's face.私の一族などどうでもいいことです死ねば後宮などという姓は何の意味もないそしてそれこそが要約私を解き放ってくれるのです金蔵は死にたくて軍隊にそんなのダメ家族が悲しむわ家族など私には誰も I have a wife for the sake of public appearances and children. However, I've never wanted any of them. Everything, everything is a fleeting daydream created by selfish, greedy old men. So at least being stuck on this island, I can forget about all of that and find some peace. Peace? But I haven't, but haven't I spent each and every day complaining that I wasn't sent to the front and haven't managed to die yet? <laughs> Forgive me, Kinzo. Oh, those words. I think they set me free. All the Japanese people call me Ushuramiya. Every time I hear it, it's a constant reminder that I'm the property of the Ushuramiya family. But she's different. She calls me Kinzo. I can forget that cursed family. Kinzo. I hadn't meant to make Beatrice feel guilty, but she seemed certain that her thoughtless words had hurt me. Arigato. Eh? You call me Kinzo to call me Kinzo, so I can return to myself. I'm finally able to do the real meaning of the people who have seen me in the real world. キンゾ、あなたはとても遠い異国で出会った外国人だけれど、あなたの心はとても繊細で美しい。私たちはきっとキンゾに住んでいたなら、とても当たり前な友人になっていたわ。私も嬉しいのよ。あなたは私のことを
Why do you gotta go for his butt? You can poke him in the back. I think you just like his butt. Look, we're having his butt pinched once more. Will hopped around in pathetic agony. ベアトリーチェと初めて出会われた特別な場所だったのですねうん私がこの島に来ることがなければ出会うこともなかった奇跡の島なのだその潜水艦基地の名残とやらは今も残っているのか Yep. I mean, we knew this, right? Like, we see it in the things, like, all of the, like, in the underground. It's, there's flashes of, like, this, it looks the same. And that's, and that is what the, um... The epitaph is for, is for discovering that and discovering the gold. So we know that Beatrice Jesus came from a very prestigious, noble family, so that explains where she got all the gold from. And then when her father dead, you know, Kinzo probably talked about his family, and his family name is, like, in tatters, so she helped him build it back up again. So <laughs> ショウニュウドを改造した広大な地下壕で地下を網羅し島内各地を要塞化するなどという寝言の残骸だ私はその地下道を生かし島の両端に二つの屋敷を作らせたのだ二つの屋敷二つの家族後ろ宮家の屋
もっと陽気な人たちばかりなのにここへ来てからみんな妙に空気が張り詰めているわ少尉は部下たち全員に常時銃を手放さないように命じてるまるでここが敵地かのようだわ That was true. The Italians were clearly the very opposite of relaxed. The Japanese soldiers watching this began to suspect that the Italians didn't really trust them at all. Gunjin not a Okashi Kotosanaisa. Mushro, Koyu Tokikoso, Kirito Hikimete, Yuguni Hazgashi Tokoro, Misetak Nain Janaika. Shushinji Niva Kanaras Nezban or Tatirusi. もう航行できないスクラップ同然の潜水艦に今もあなたたちを近づけないように見張りを立てているわ私はなんだか日本人を露骨に毛嫌いしているように見えて気持ちが悪い True, they had set up constant sentry by the submarine and had refused to let any of the Japanese soldiers come near This hadn't made the Japanese particularly happy However, submarines are treated as classified in all countries Maybe it was just natural for them to stop foreigners from approaching it without reason. It's funny, just like with the boat uh, on, you know, Rokunjima during this whole like murder thing is like the boat. It's like they're stuck in purgatory almost. They're just stuck in like a world where nobody can get to them. We had been told a boat was being sent from there for them directly from the mainland, but apparently, thanks to the weather, problems of the command chain, command chain, and the recent air raids, there were no ships to spare for a forgotten island like this. There might have been some sort of diplomatic problem. After all, their homeland had already surrendered to the Allies. I didn't know the details. The only thing I knew for sure. Was that they'd been stuck on Rokunjima for two whole weeks and no one had come to get them. Of course, we had some small boats on Rokunjima. There was nothing physically stopping us from taking them to a nearby island. Still, Rokunjima was technically a top secret base, and contact with the outside world had been strictly forbidden. <laughs> To me, those two weeks were the first I'd ever truly lived. The faint twenty years before all seemed to vanish in the sparkle of those two weeks. I realized that she would have to leave this place eventually, and yet this one moment felt so rich and dazzling that I felt myself wishing it could last forever. Then I heard a voice calling for Beatrice in Italian. Angelo Shoi Dio. Kimini Yojimitai. Mata Okogo to Kasira. Nihon Jinta Maristas Kusurunato. Saiki Urusai no yo. The ensign approached, saluting Kenzo, and after glancing at Beatrice as though asking her to translate something, he began to speak in Italian. Judging by his tone, it sounded like something serious. Shoiwa. とても重要な話があるからあなたたちの指揮官に合わせてほしいと言ってるわ協力を求めたいと言っている何のことかわからないわ重要な話わかった山本注意を探そう Ensign Angelo had two of his subordinates with him and wore a stern expression on his face They didn't have to say anything for us to realize this must be something very serious The winch creaked and the thick chains rang out with a dull clang. Very, very slowly, it was lifted out of the submarine's cargo hold. Oh, maybe it is an explosive or a bomb or a weapon of some kind. The lieutenant and the others looked up at what the winch was slowly lifting up, all of them wearing unpleasant, forced smiles. これが… 
Oh, it is the gold. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. I guess I guess he was running from Yeah, I guess they were making a break for it once they realized that, you know, they were about to lose. He just took all of his uh his gold, he took all of his money that he had cuz gold, unlike, you know, the Italian money, it can be used everywhere in the world as currency. Oh shit. That okay, so it was stored on Rokinjima and it's technically it would be Beatrice's cuz it was her father's gold. It was a mountain of gold ingots. Those carefully piled bars were being slowly lifted out of the cargo hold, one group after another. This gold had been their true cargo. I don't know where they were planning to take it. They might have been trying to sneak it into Japan, one of their allies. Or they might have been on their way to hide it in some remote area. Was it some sort of strategy? A conspiracy? Embezzlement? Top secret transportation of wealth? This incomprehensible amount of gold led to all sorts of dark suspicions, but we didn't know anything about the truth. I guess I don't know shit about submarines. <laughs> I'm no submarine expert. I guess they are quite big, and... I guess you can hide tons of gold somewhere in a submarine without many people knowing about it. All told, the gold weighed an incredible ten tons. That was the only truth we could wrap our minds around at the moment. It strongly resisted showing this to us. However, the submarine could no longer make sea, and it was apparently continuing to take in water bit by bit. Rokunjima had been outfitted in an extremely slipshod way, so we had no means of repairing it. Also, while we could unload the sub, there was no way we could lift it up again once it had filled with water and sunk to the bottom. It was clear that unless action was taken, the gold would soon become completely impossible to transport, and so they had made the decision to unload it. Of course, they made no effort to explain the reason for all this gold. They just asked us to help them take it out. There was no longer any way to change the course of this war. The Axis powers would probably all surrender, leading to an allied victory. Anyone could tell this simply by looking at the American planes flying across the sky day after day. However, gold would still be valuable after the war was over. Everyone stared upwards, dumbfounded, as the winch slowly lifted the dully sparkling gold. All right, we're getting all sorts of answers here. Who Beatrice was, where the gold came from. We don't know much about the gold, but how it ended up, you know, on the island. Chui. Italian people are looking for this gold. They 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 are looking for 日本が黄金を横領するのを恐れているから報告されたくないのだろうと言っている。they had come all this way to make sure the gold didn't fall into enemy hands. They needed to hide this gold from the puppet government until their homeland could be truly restored. Ushiromia, their mission must have been to hide that gold in absolute secrecy until the day of their homeland's restoration. Later on, several plausible rumors would circulate. 
about how Germany also moved much of its secret wealth to certain hidden areas in South America just prior to its surrender. It was a very natural conclusion to reach. The submarine was their only method of transporting the gold in secrecy, and it become, it's become completely useless. They can't fully stop the water from seeping in, and it will probably sink completely before much longer. There's no longer any way for them to transport the gold in secrecy. In other words, their mission had ended in failure here in the Far East. So just how is Lieutenant Yamamoto proposing that we assist them? この Beatrice quickly translated this and told Ensign Angelo. The Ensign began discussing rapidly with his subordinates. They didn't look happy. Japan may have been their ally, but they probably didn't want the gold for reconstructing their motherland to be entrusted to Asians. Still, it's hard to imagine any other option for them. <laughs> Hiding this gold was the final order given to them by their fallen homeland. However, by now, there was no way for that order to be carried out successfully. If the mainland or their own homeland found out, the gold would probably be confiscated by the wrong people from their point of view. If they really wanted to carry out their homeland's orders faithfully, Lieutenant Yamamoto's proposal was extremely reasonable. Though the lieutenant couldn't understand their words, it seemed he realized how divided they were. <笑>我々が協力すれば、あの黄金を厳重に隠すことができるぞ。幸いなことに廃棄された地下金が長々とこの島の地下を横断している。この島の地下に黄金を隠して埋めれば。<笑> <笑>誰にも発見できないと言ってる。現実的な申し出だと議論してるわ。でも日本人の手を借りるのに抵抗を感じてるみたい。議論が難航しているようです。<笑> まさかいつまでも波打ち際に積み上げておくわけにもいくまえ。アンジェロ10トンの黄金を隠すという労力の提供と守秘義務を彼らが本当に無償で提供してくれるのかとね。ゴブと。50-50。Okay. I wonder if this is when Beatrice said I want Kinzo specifically to have all the gold, not you. それを手間賃に。the instant Beatrice translated that sentence, Ensign Angelo slammed his hands on the desk and stood up. Instead of flinching, Lieutenant Yamamoto, true to his boast of once being a thug that everyone feared, actually looked even more relaxed and confident than he had previously. <laughs> Hachiwario 
全員が共犯でなくてはならない全員に着服の共犯になれと言ってる。So I just wonder how Kinzo got all of it. Like that gold, does it technically belong to her father? Or does it belong to the government? Well, I mean, not the government anymore because the government kind of fell. Like they said, they have the puppet government. Did everybody else die? And Kinzo was just the left, last one left standing? But then he said Beatrice left him all the gold. So. Lieutenant Yamamoto was grinning. It really did look as though he'd been blinded by greed, just as Beatrice said. やがて本土から来る向かいの連中の目に嫌をなく入るだろうそうなればここにいる誰もが得をしないぞ我々の申し出を受けて早急に黄金を隠すべきだアンジェロ少尉は日本政府やイタリア政府にはどうしても知られたくないみたい彼は自分が与えられた任務に最後まで責任を持ちたいみたいよつまりどういうことだ何割かを口止め料として与えてでも島内に地中深く埋めることを望んでるわもちろん貸し官たちには異論もあるみたい5割は問題外だと憤慨してるわ後ろ見イタリア人たちの感触はどうだ彼らも黄金がこれ以上の人目につくことを望んでいないようですしかし取り分に異論があるようです。少尉は一割ならば検討できると言ってるわ。無論。山本注意がそれで納得しないだろうとも言ってるけど。後ろ見ろ。I feel like the、uh, big portion of this is just gonna be negotiations. Now we're just gonna watch these guys negotiate it out. イタリア人の返事はいかに。一割なら。検討すると。This time, it was Lieutenant Yamamoto who slammed down on the desk. But the Italians didn't flinch either. An incredible tension filled the small room. However, despite his violent outburst a second ago, Lieutenant Yamamoto's expression still looked smug and in control. He's probably confident that he have now the initiative. これ以上は譲らんと伝えろ !40% for the Japanese, 60% for the Italians. The lieutenant made it sound like he was being willing to stand firm on that. But in truth, these negotiations were not being made on an equal footing. If the Italians just wanted the gold for themselves, there wouldn't be much of a problem. But what if, what if they really were true periods and decided that they ought to return the gold? Even to the defeated puppet government of their homeland for the purpose of reconstruction. If so, they would probably report the existence of the gold to the Italian embassy. Eventually, the Italian government would petition the Allied nations for the retrieval of their gold. They probably wouldn't make it all the way back to Italy, but it might be used effectively to repair and rebuild the battered towns. If that happened, Lieutenant Yamamoto and his friends would, be would only be able to sneak out a few ingots at most. He was greedily planning to make this his own treasure island so that he and his subordinates could have an, enor an enormous fortune all to themselves. If he wanted those ambitions to bear out, the Italians would have to conceal the presence of the gold. しかし疑問だ。アンジェロ少尉が誰にも黄金を渡したくないなら、沈みゆく潜水艦に任せて沈めればよかったはず。どうして荷揚げを考えたくはないけれど命令が遂行不能になった時点で少尉はこの黄金を横領することを考え始めたのかも彼は今歌手官たちに軍人としての意見と祖国に家族が待つ一個人としての意見を聞きたいと言っているわ堅物の歌手官たちが激高してる The discussion between the Italians was becoming fierce and emotional Though their homeland had fallen, they had come all this way in accordance with its orders. They had probably been given this mission because they were particularly faithful and duty minded troops. It seemed they couldn't just agree to a foreigner's proposal to embezzle and split up the gold. 
Ensign Angelo looked like he was doing all he could to calm the unexpectedly fervent rage of his subordinates. Looks like the gold is blinding them, too. It seems no one can sort out their own personal feelings in the way they want to be perceived. ビーちゃん。彼らは時間が欲しいと言っています。いいとも。大いに議論したらいい。しかし時間はないぞ。隠すとなったら時間と手間がかかる。明日の正午までに結論しよう。以上だ。イタリア人ども。回答期限は明日の正午だそうだ
我々の任務はもう失敗諸君にも祖国で待つ家族がいるはずだそして極東の島国までよく後悔に耐えたそれに対するこれは正当な報酬なのだという考え方もあるあのさ<笑>日本人に助けなさい絶対に反対だ死んだ親友たちが浮かばれないそんな目に勝利日本人が友好的でない場合、oh. 我々は最終的解決手段を辞さない覚悟が必要です。Are they like talking about like we should kill them? <笑>ごちょ、最終的解決手段とは何か That would look very suspicious if a boat showed up to come get them and all the soldiers are dead. Someone gulped. A stiff tension hung over the room. 日本人たちはたるみ切っています。実践経験もない。腰抜けばかりです。Oh, 我々は精兵です。すでに基地内の間取りのほぼすべてと。日本人の人数。They did... 配置状況は把握しています。They did say that they had some boats on the island, so they could just kill the soldiers and just take the boat. Although, it would still be very hard for them to transport all that gold on so, like, some little boats. 勝利の命令があれば、短時間で制圧できるでしょう。Or maybe he's just saying, like, we'll subdue them and torture them until they agree to our.、Um, To our deal. 戦闘員と思わしきは山本を含めて数人程度残りは軍属の作業員風情です上辺の人数は日本人が上ですが実質兵力ではこちらが優位です日本人を殺せば迎えに来た時、yeah, exactly. それをどう説明するごまかしようがないぞ死体さえ見つからなければどうとでもごまかせます勝利この基地を制圧するのは容易です山本以下主要な兵士数人を殺してみせればあっさりと作業員たちは降伏するでしょう。彼らに黄金を運ばせ、地中に埋めましょう。もちろん、彼らの口は永遠に塞ぎますが。日本人たちを皆殺しにするということか。So I guess it's not the first time that there was a potential or at least talks of a massacre on this island. 殺しましょう。全員殺せば、黄金のことは誰にも知られずに済むのです。Did Beato hear that? I bet Beato heard that. At that moment, the door, which had supposedly been locked, opened slightly and a metal object was thrown in. Granada! Oh, a grenade! Oh, shit! Looks like、uh, they were, th you know, the Japanese were thinking the same thing. As the yell rang out, the table was kicked over to be used as a shield, and they all dropped to the floor. However, in this cramped room, it probably wouldn't do them any good. Italians were all prepared for death. <laughs> Oh shit, it's getting intense here. Here I was thinking it was just gonna be like, oh, it's just gonna be negotiation talks, but we got some action going on. Fortunately, the shoddy grenade was a dud. I mean, even if they were just thinking about it, now it's. they're gonna do it. The door was slammed open, and three Japanese soldiers wielding pistols jumped in. Maybe Kinzo was literally. Maybe Kinzo and Beato were the only ones left alive in all this. In the small room, no matter who shot where, it was bound to hit someone. The exchange of bullets instantly caused a rain of blood, with casualties on both sides. The three who jumped in were covered with bullet holes and fell over, moaning and thrashing. <laughs> こんな犠牲だあの手榴弾が不発でなかったら全員死んでる The grenade was still rolling about on the floor. It had been a surprise attack. Lieutenant Yamamoto had probably judged the negotiations would not go his way and had decided to make the first move. Or else, maybe he'd been planning from the beginning to put them in the position of having to take a vote in order to gather them all in one place. Rokunjima belonged to the Japanese. If they killed all the Italians, then not half, but all the gold would go to them. There was still a chance the grenade might go off late. The Italians rushed out into the corridor. They heard gunfire from down the hallway. It was coming from the direction of the submarine dock. Clearly, the troops guarding the pile of gold were being attacked. Shoi! Gomere wo! Yamu o en! Nihonji wa korose! あいつなできますこの連中ただの船乗りじゃねえ<笑>なるほど
I'm guessing, like, maybe uh, Kinzo sees what's happening. He's going to take Beato, take her away and hide her somewhere safe, and maybe everybody else got killed. Or maybe, like, Yamamoto's the only one... I could see Yamamoto being the only one left alive after all this, and he's like, I just got to go take out Beatrice, and then it's all mine. And maybe he'd take out Kinzo, too, because he never liked Kinzo, and then maybe Kinzo will kill him. That would be badass. As soon as I heard the sound of repeated gunfire, gunfire, I knew. I knew whatever it was that had been smoldering since the time the gold was unloaded had finally burst into flame. It's funny, it's like with... It's like with the Ushirimiyas, whenever, like, when it has to do with the money, the gold, they just turn on each other. The eyes of our soldiers, when looking at the gold, had not been normal. Yes, those eyes had been entranced by demons. The Italians had also been at breaking point due to the heavy burden they bore. Who, would have, who wouldn't have snapped after being trapped in a distant land where you can't understand the language or the writing? Thinking I had to do something, I ran towards the sound of gunfire. Looking back on it, that was an extremely foolish thing to do. That sound meant that there were people shooting at each other, people killing each other, and yet, unarmed as I was, I dashed towards the sound, as though I was trying to mediate some schoolyard fight. It didn't take long before I learned how foolish and naive such a thing was in the heat of battle. Before he was wanting to die, this is what he wanted, but now that he's got Beatrice in his life, he's probably like, I don't want to die. I have something to live for. <laughs> Hiroka Warrant Officer Hiroka was lying face down, his entire body drenched in blood. Judging by the trail of blood behind him, it was clear he had somehow managed to crawl here from a different room before dying. No, he was still twitching. He might not be dead yet, but on this island without a doctor. No, even if we had a doctor, how could anyone possibly save a man who had been shot this many times in the chest? When I looked into the room he must have crawled out of, I saw two more blood-stained Japanese corpses. I fell backwards pathetically on my butt, my mouth hanging open in shock. Come to think of it, that was the first time I'd ever faced death in my life. The entire world was at war. Even though millions would die, both east and west, this was the first time I met with a person's death directly. Ridiculous. Didn't I join the army, hoping to die? Didn't I whine about not being sent to the front lines? Yeah, so rejoice, Kinzo. Isn't this the death you were looking for? Why not spread your hands and yell out loud? Come for me, magnificent death. Someone came running towards me. It was a colleague of mine, a Japanese man, Tajima-kun. <laughs> He dashed towards me, pale faced and out of breath. His face seemed horribly contorted with terror. Mine probably looked the same. Someone yelled in Italian, and at the same time, the Jimakun let out a scream. Then he grabbed onto me as he fell to the floor. A red stain was spreading across his back before my eyes. As he spat out bubbles of blood, he said that one word, and died. But the shocking event of seeing someone die right in front of me did not capture my attention. No living thing is concerned with the death of others at a fundamental level. The one thing that matters is whether they themselves die or not. My attention was fully occupied by the barrel of the gun the Italian soldier was pointing. Ooh, maybe Beato saved him. Tajima-kun's back burst once more as he leaned against me. Flesh tore, blood splattered. The warm splash of it covered my face. Was the Italian still trying to finish him off, even though he had stopped moving for good? How foolish I've been. Can I still not understand the scene in front of me? Rejoice, Kinzo. Now you'll finally get what you've wanted all this time. The Italian hadn't fired to finish off Tajima-kun. He had been aiming at the man Tajima-kun had fallen on. Me. Ushirimiya Kinzo. It's a little, um, it's humanizing to see 
Kinzo is like a young man who's like scared and human and doesn't seem like this grand figure, you know? I pushed his corpse aside, scrambled against the floor, and dashed away, tumbling over myself. My hands had pushed against the floor hard enough to tear off the ring finger fingernail on my left hand. When faced with death, humans truly can resist with all they've got. I tumbled over and over as I ran, scraping up parts of my body. It was painful, hot, but that didn't matter at all. I heard the yelling in Italian coming from behind me over and over again. It felt like they were running, chasing after me. I didn't want to look back, so I kept running and running, as though the Italians were right behind me. This is death. Didn't you want to die? No, I don't want to die. Why? Didn't I want to die so badly? But now I know. I know how wonderful it is to be alive. She taught me. Beach. How did she pronounce her name? Beach? Beachy? Beachy did. I can only be free when I talk with her. No. By talking with her, I was finally alive for the first time. I was finally born. I want to live. I want to live. I want to live. I want to live. I don't want to die. I want to live and see her right now. If I don't see her, I'll die. I'll be killed. Stay cool, Kinzo. She might be killed too. If she live and she dies, you might as well be dead. Before I knew it, my face was covered in tears, not in drool. When I stumbled over something and fell, I was finally able to come to my senses a little. <laughs> Is he going to unlock the beast? Is he going to be like, I have to, f I got to save her. I could still hear intermittent gunfire. The gunfight was still going on, and it had spread throughout the entire base. Biche, are you okay? I'll find her and take her to a safe place. The lieutenant will probably kill all the Italians to steal the gold. Biche probably won't be an exception. Beat. <gasps> Beat. <coughs> Meeting you was the first time I ever lived, the first time I was ever born. So if you die, I'll die again. I could feel every cell in my body being reborn, not as Ushiro Mio Kinzo, but as a completely different Kinzo. Of course, I was terrified that I might really be shot if I went back, but I no longer want to die, in the truest possible sense. So I was able to overcome my fear. <laughs> and the first cry of her name is born. <laughs> Alright, sorry to leave it on a bit of a cliffhanger, but I am strapped for time today, and I don't know how much longer this is going to go, and that seemed like a good place to end it. But uh, holy cow, I wasn't expecting action in this episode. I'm happy we're getting the backstory on Kenzo, finally, you know, like he's been such a mysterious character, and his relationship with, with Beatrice has been kind of mysterious too, but now we're seeing it bloom, and this relationship between him and her is sweet. It's the daughter one that I'm like, Ugh. So, we are going to continue on and see, I, obviously, he must have saved Beatrice. Um, the fact that he had a daughter with her, and he got the gold. So, I'm assuming that they, you know, at least had a relationship from this point on. So, I, I doubt that she died here, but I'm curious about how she did meet her end and everything after that. But this was a really, um, this was a good episode. Uh, very, very informational and eye-opening Um and, like, I'm happy that we're actually getting some more, like, information, some, like, concrete information about stuff that I had no idea about. So, anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode, and stay tuned for uh, the end of this, you know, exciting, heart-pounding uh, battle between the Italians and the Japanese and what will happen to Kinso and Beatrice afterwards. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Until then, bye. Special shoutouts to my top tier patrons Kaori Makoto, Revealing Storm, Jared Fan, Tequila Mockingbird, Izzy Ibo, Joel Ustman, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gazif, Icognito, Locus Corollas, Wusing Chrysalis, and Lumi Arclight.